YouTube is Chris. Welcome back to the channel. I have an Escape from Tarkov FPS and latency optimization guide for you guys. Now, if you like someone who actually goes ahead and actually tests things properly, throughput, latency, FPS, 1% and 0.1s, I'm your man. A lot of you guys aren't subscribed. Hit that subscribe button and I'd appreciate it a lot. Now, for my regular YouTube viewers, I'm sorry I've been on a bit of a hiatus. Just moved house. Things should be back to normal now. Anyway, let's get on with it, guys. I want to tell you guys the biggest improvements that you can do are actually not with the game in game settings. I'm sorry guys, a lot of it is your hardware and setting up your hardware and setting up your windows correctly. I have a playlist here. You go to my channel, go to playlist and go to free the optimization pack. Everything's covered in here. I'd recommend most of you to stick on Windows 10 because Windows 11 is a little bit buggy. This covers absolutely everything. If you're uncomfortable with doing any of the overclocks, at least follow this video. There's an optimization pack you can download and that will cover most of the stuff. Can't stress this enough guys, the biggest improvements are going to be made with following my optimization pack which covers everything. Good RAM, speed and timings, so fast speed, low timings, good CPU and overclocking it, good GPU and overclocking it. Stability of hardware so no faults, fresh windows install, power plan, timer resolution, graphics driver and settings, minimal background tasks. Optimal game graphics settings, a mouse with low delay, controller with low delay, keyboard with low delay, and monitor with low delay. They're majority of the most important things. You can only do so much with the game. Now in saying that guys, let's get on with it. I want you also to go ahead and download Process Lasso. This game tends to not run well with hyperthreading or SMT. Now if you're not sure what that is, it's okay guys. If you go to Task Manager here, go to Performance, go to CPU, you'll see that if you have the same cores as the same logical processors, you don't have a CPU that has hyperthreading or SMT, okay? But if you do, the game tends to not really run well on the threads. It'll only run best on the cores. This program is very, very easy to set up to get it to just run on the cores. You can get a nice little FPS boost by doing so. It just automates the process so it keeps applying it every time you reboot the game. So I'd recommend going downloading Process Lasso. You can just go to the website and go get the free version. So anyway, let's talk about game launcher optimization. There's really nothing you can do in here. There's nothing special. So don't worry about it. Recommend just having the launcher not open when Windows boots up. Okay. And as far as launch options, there's nothing you can do. As far as config options, there's actually nothing you can do. If you guys are curious, the config location is in app data. So to find this, press Windows key and R, okay? Then just type app data. Then go to roaming. Then find battle state games. Then escape from Tarkov and settings. Okay, and that's the config location there. Now, unfortunately guys, we can't change anything in here that is not already built into the game. So for as, as an example, say I wanted to change the FPS cap, all right, to something different, it actually would completely ignore it. So you can only really change the settings in game. So there's no point in me actually sharing a config file with you guys. So what I'll do is I'll boot up the game and I'll show you guys the settings that I would recommend and I'll show you the tests straight after. Now guys, this game was really difficult to test with because every time I would join a lobby, I would get shot. Also in saying that, it's really hard to get in the same spot every time. So this test I'm about to show you after I show you the recommended graphics settings. Just keep in mind that this game is really not very well optimized. Latencies all over the place depending on the plays where you are, depending on what you're doing, depending on the time of the day. So it's very, very difficult for me to get accurate tests. But I at least somewhat was able to get quite a few tests done so I can show you guys how things scale with this game on different types of hardware, at least. Now, saying that, what we actually want to do is once you've booted up Tarkov, I need you to go back to the desktop. So you can just press Windows key D, Control Shift Escape. Okay. And what I actually want you guys to do is if you go to details here and go to memory, so the highest memory usage, that's Tarkov. That's the XE for Tarkov. If you right click and go to affinity, as you can see, these are our cores and threads. CPU zero is core one, CPU one is thread one. So it's actually core one, thread one, core two, thread two, and etc. We actually just want to disable the threads. Now you can do it in here, but every time you reboot the game, it's going to default back to this. That's why we use Process Lasso. So just go ahead and install Process Lasso and then open it up. I've already got it installed, so I can just show you guys straight away. What I want you to do now is go straight to Active Processes. Then I want you to go to Escape from Tarkov. You should see it here. If you don't see it here, just click on memory. It should be the one that uses the most memory, okay? 
right click this and go to CPU affinity, then select always, and then you can disable hyperthreading. If you've got an Intel system, it'll say disable HT or disable hyperthreading. If you've got an AMD CPU, it'll say disable SMT. So if you click that, it makes it quite easy. And as you can see, I'll, I'll click that. Now we'll go check this, see it's added the rules. And every time that this program's running in the background, it'll automatically apply it to Tarkov here. All right, automatically. So you don't have to worry about continuing to keep doing this. As you can see now, it's like core one, thread one, core two, thread two. And as you can see, it's forcing it on the cores. Now for most of you, this is actually gonna be quite useful because the game does not run well with the threads. Although in saying that, if you have like a dual core system, I probably wouldn't recommend doing this. So you'd probably want at least six cores on your CPU to consider doing this. Like I said, if you've got like a dual core or a four core system, it might not be good to do. So it's worth just testing your FPS before and after. Okay, if you've got a lower end CPU, but most of you guys would actually want to do this. Now in saying that, go back to active processes and let's check that again, escape from Tarkov, CPU affinity. Don't use current, use always, so always disable SMT, okay? As you can see here, it's applied there too. So as long as the process is run, Lesso is running in the background, it'll apply this. If you've closed process Lesso out where you've got the game open, just go ahead and open process Lesso again and it will automatically do this for you, which is really convenient. And we can see that it's actually reflected in here. All right, so that's all you need to worry about with um, process lasso. Now I have tested other things in this game like high priority disabling CPU zero, a whole bunch of stuff. It doesn't help guys. Anyway, let's get on with the game graphic settings. So let's go straight to the graphic settings. Now, like I said, I can't share a config with you guys because it just ignores anything that you want to change that you can't set in the game already. So we might as well set them in the game. Go to post FX. Now, if you use these, you will get some FPS loss because it this game can get quite GPU heavy by the time you add these. So if you must with visibility, fair enough, but I would recommend avoiding them, okay? Go to graphics tab. These are the settings that I'd recommend. Now, obviously change your resolution to your native resolution. Some of you guys might be on 1080p. All right, just run native there. Okay, full screen always for lower delay and higher FPS. Now, as far as settings, these are all set in low. But for most of you that have, might have a medium to decent enough graphics card, I'd recommend crank up the textures to high because that actually won't affect frames that much if you have a decent graphic card. If you have a lower end graphics card, you might actually benefit from cranking the resampling down even a little bit further, the 0.5, but it will make things look a little bit potato. Another thing I'd recommend is turning on VSync. This game is really weird the way it behaves. I want to show you guys something. The max it'll actually let you cap your frames to is 144. Weirdly enough, if you enable VSync, it'll actually uncap it as long as you have VSync disabled in your AMD or Nvidia control panel and I'll show you what that looks like. Also another thing, so just leave that on and I'll show you guys how to disable VSync in the control panel in a little bit. Another thing if you um, are, don't have the greatest graphics card and you are actually like um, playing on quite a high resolution, it may help to bump down resolutions. It won't be good for visibility, but if you don't have the greatest card, you will get some more frames by bumping down the resolution. So that's sort of up to you. But on this rig, I'd probably be running it like this. And I'd also recommend cranking up anisotropic filtering to on. As this setting actually doesn't really affect FPS, it just makes the image look a lot clearer. Now, if any of you guys have a NVIDIA card, which is going to be probably 90% of you, make sure you turn NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency to on plus boost, okay? That's highly recommended, all right? And let's go over to game settings here, all right? I tested automatic RAM cleaner. It actually didn't do anything and only use physical cores didn't do anything either. That's why we're using Process Lasso. I'd recommend turning head bobbing all the way down so you don't get motion sickness and field of view is a preference thing. I did test this as far as latency and FPS and I didn't really see that much of a difference. Very, very minimal, it's not worth it. So most of the time you're gonna to wanna to run, it's maxed out so you can see everyone. So just to confirm, make sure you have VSync on so it's gonna set it to uncapped. So we'll try to turn VSync on through the driver but then we force it off in the driver and I'll show you how to do that now. You've got an AMD graphics control panel. You'd simply go into uh, the graphics option and go down to wait for vertical refresh and always off. So it'd be turned on in the game, but off in the driver. So it actually wouldn't be on and it will just uncap the FPS. I'll show you how to do that now on an NVIDIA system. Simply go to your desktop, right click the desktop and go to NVIDIA control panel. And I want you to go to manage 3D settings, okay? 
to manage 3D settings, scroll down and go ahead and find vertical sync, make sure that's off. So it'll be turned on in the game and off in the control panel, that way you'll have uncapped FPS. And going back to the game being buggy and unoptimized and um, a little bit all over the place, in saying that if you have an AMD system, unfortunately, if you've got VSync on in the game and off in the control panel to uncap FPS, it will unfortunately still cap to your monitor's refresh rate. So if you've got a 144 hertz monitor, unfortunately, you're just going to be stuck. But if you've got 240 hertz or above, at least it will go to that. There's no workaround, unfortunately, but that's not an issue with NVIDIA cards. So let's get straight to the test now, guys. Here are the two test rigs. The Intel NVIDIA system is my streaming PC. The AMD AMD system is my gaming PC. The AMD AMD system has some nice overclocks going for it. And the streaming PC is more conservative so it's just like a locked factory boost um and you know just xmp nothing special and just a locked gpu core nothing special now on the streaming pc i have the 360 hertz 1080p and on the gaming pc i have the 1440p 270 hertz now here is a quick test just to show you guys a uh, black and white um you know unreal engine 4 test really really fast just to show you there's not a huge difference between the two systems um and maybe the reason why the gaming one is faster even though the monitor is slower is because the graphics card is more powerful Here's a nice little sneak preview of my test methodology, although I don't want to bore you guys with this. Like I said, it was really difficult to test because it's hard to get in the same spot. And also I wasn't able to move forward because there's no auto run. So a very, very difficult game to benchmark. As you can see, it's to both systems, very low setting 720p. Now here are the quick results if you guys don't want to stick around, but I'm going to sort of break it down a little bit straight after this. So um, yeah, just pause the video if you want to have a quick look. I wasn't able to test each individual setting, but I, I did my absolute best on these two systems. So stick around if you want the breakdown. If not, thank you very much for watching. All right, now let's do the breakdown, guys. Now, unfortunately, like I said, wasn't able to test this as well as I would have liked, but it was just too difficult. There's no auto run to move forward, so don't fully trust the 1% and 0.1s, but it's the best I could do. And the latency is all over the place, guys, as you can see. I mean, depending on the time of the day, what's going on, how many players are around you, trying to get in the same spot, very, very difficult, but it is what it is. I did absolutely try my best. So in saying that, I did test it on customs. I, I decided to test it on customs for all of these tests because I thought it was a, a slightly bigger map <clears throat> than the underground one anyway. Um, and anyway, let's get sort of started. So I'm going to be working on these graphs in the future for future videos to make them look a bit better. But I mean, this is at least somewhat a start as you can see. So I always start with low settings, um, 720p. So this is on the AMD AMD system, okay? And as you can see, that's sort of the best latency that I could get at the time with the average FPS, the 1% and 0.1. So if you want to know about latency, latency is just like click to display latency. Average FPS is just like your average 1% is and 0.1 is kind of FPS that you feel like if these, these are really low, the game can feel stuttery, like micro stuttery and stuff. So you want this to be as high as possible. I changed field of view, not a notable difference to be worth it. And it could even be within benchmark variation because of how like messy this game is with optimization. Like even just going in and out of the like settings menu, sometimes like will give you a different FPS result. All that could be the server or the players around. It's very hard to see. As you can see with the graphics card, the 6900 XT, it just carries in that like upping the resolutions here. Uh, we don't see a huge difference between 720p and 1080p now we actually do um, and there's two things that you guys need to understand that can affect frames and latency not just necessarily this the, the settings but also and, and then the, the graphics processing the, the the gpu usage affects uh, frames and latency so the higher gpu usage the lower frames and the higher the latency okay and also um saying that you know your actual like settings itself as well right so there's a few things going on here right so you can't just look at the results and go oh you know blah 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 it also depends on gpu usage at the time okay and as you can see like cranking up the to 1440p gpu usage goes up frames start to come down that's why in, a, in the future when newer cards come out you could see 1440p being maybe down to here maybe on the 4000 series cards you know etc etc anyway going to low settings i mean this is pretty similar to look how it scales what's interesting to me is how the one percents came up but i really don't trust this game guys um as far as testing it so i did my best and this is what we have here so i'm at least showing you guys something 
So I've retested low 1080p and as you can see here, it's even different to, to that because the game's so variable. Um, and even look at the, the 0.1s there. So in that actual match, the game would have felt horrible and there's nothing I can do about that. It's just the game, unfortunately. They need to optimize it better, but uh, they haven't and it's still in beta, so it is what it is. So anyway, I decided to go max settings. Um, sorry, that was medium settings. So low settings, 1080p, medium settings, 1080p, as you can see. Um, and weirdly enough um i don't know why the latency came down here but once again i had to like sort of restart the match unfortunately so i wouldn't fully trust this if i was in the same match in the same map i can guarantee you that the latency would have gone up and it would have been like a lot less frames but like i said i did my best in the test so take these with a grain of salt unfortunately so max 1080p obviously you'll see yeah i had to reset the game like for, for some of these tests, very, very frustrating. Um, you know, the, the, it comes up a little bit. Um, and then, you know, going to max, here, here we go. So here's a point where it's like beyond a benchmark variation of the game being unoptimized. So like cranking this thing up, max settings in 4K, the latency goes up ridiculous and the frames kind of go down uh, quite a lot. I wanted to test reflex, so sorry, anti-lag for AMD. So you do that in the um, AMD control panel. Um, you know, it's similar to Reflex's technology, it's about AMD's technology of it. And we actually did see a nice improvement of um, latency. And that's way beyond, like I said, benchmark variation of the game being random, which is cool to see. Um, so yeah, that actually does something. Now, I wouldn't recommend anti-lag if you're generally playing like um, lower settings or just like higher settings, but they're just uh, low res. But if you guys, are, any of you guys have an AMD card and you're playing like a high resolution or absolute cranked up settings, like please enable like radiant anti-lag in the um, AMD control panel. That will actually help, but only in a GPU bound scenario. So if you've got a weak graphics card, enable anti-lag, or if you have a good graphics card and you crank up settings, enable anti-lag. If you've got a medium to high end graphics card and you don't run max settings, don't use anti-lag. It's a bit buggy, honestly. Um, low 1080p, uh, we retested this and this is the best result that I got for low 20p because obviously might have been less players around. Um, and as you can see here, it's a little bit all over the place, guys. I did my best. Um, and then I decided, hey, let's let's actually cap the FPS um, in the game and we'll see what kind of a difference it makes for latency. And so the conclusion to all of this, and we're going to get to the Intel NVIDIA system, is you want to at least hold about 144 FPS um, around that, at least 140. If you, if you hold around 140, you're going to be okay for input lag. So if you're dialing in your settings, just try to aim to at least, uh, and you've got a decent enough rig to be able to hold those kind of frames, try to hold that because that's kind of the sweet spot for latency. When you start to go under that, um, things really go south for input lag, okay? Um, they really, really go south. So around 120, 140 FPS is the sweet spot, okay? Don't be concerned about trying to chase way higher because the, the game is unoptimized and you can only do so much and it's going to depend where you are and what you're doing. Anyway, let's move on to the Intel NVIDIA system. As you can see here. All right, so having a look in here and once again, all over the place, but I did my best, low settings. Um, now, obviously this card is a lot weaker and the RAM isn't tuned as much. So the CPU was a little bit more powerful. RAM was tuned a bit more and the graphic card was a bit more powerful. It, we would probably have much better results here. But that's what you're kind of looking for a 2080, 2080 Ti. Um, anyway, high field of view, not a notable change there. Um, the fact that the latency came down, I mean, like I said, this game is just all over the place. I don't usually see this much variation. I've, I've never seen this much variation unless it's a really an opt opt unoptimized game. And this is a really unoptimized game, guys. Low 1080p, um, as you can see, yep, latency comes up a bit because um, more GPU usage. Same thing again here, uh, you know, high GPU usage. Um, so surprisingly, actually didn't affect the frames that much, just the latency. So that's cool to see. Uh, using 2080 Ti, 1440p for this game isn't like the end of the world. Um, and 4K, that's when things really go south on the 2080 Ti for latency, very, very bad. Um, and that's with reflex off. So we're gonna get to reflex on in a second. You guys will be able to see the kind of difference it makes, but I had to do this test and kind of sequence the best I could just to show you guys how it roughly scales. Low settings again, okay. Medium settings, um, once again, like I said, um, don't fully trust those because I have to restart the game and be in a different area for that. But um, it's not so bad if you crank up one or two settings and that's why I recommend it if you've got a medium to decent end graphics card. Go high textures, 
uh, turn up anisotropic filtering because why not? Um, at least you'll be able to see what you're shooting at. You don't want to go full, full low. You can turn some settings up. It is okay. Like I said, that sweet spot, 120 FPS to 140 FPS for latency, right? Now we max it out on 4K. Like I've never seen worse latency results ever before. Um, and obviously the frames are bad. Now this now's the time when we're really GPU bound, max settings 4K on a 2080 to actually test if reflex does anything and it's huge. It actually does. So regardless, like I said, if you're on an AMD card, don't enable anti-lag unless you've got a really lower end graphics card or a higher end graphics card and you crank up settings. Those are the two options. But if you go medium to high end card, just leave it off. But if you have an Nvidia card, which is 90% of you listening right now, and have a reflex on plus boost, like I said in game, always have it on plus boost, regardless of settings, regardless of resolution, just have it on anyway. But as you can see here, it actually does do a huge thing. And that's, that's the time where you would really want it you know, finding max 4K. Anyway, load 1080p again, another test. I think that's the best result that I got for the 2080 Ti. Um, yeah, it really is uh, even better than that test with 720p there. Um, and then obviously I wanted to cap to 144 and this test was useless because I wasn't getting 144 anyway. So, but I just did it anyway to make the, the charts look exactly the same. So ignore that one. And then I wanted to cap to 60 FPS. And as you can see, latency comes quite up. So you guys can see what I'm saying by 120 FPS to 140, kind of being the sweet spot for this game. Trying to push over that is almost near impossible because it's up to the developers to fix this game any further. But anyway, guys, that's me. Thank you very much. Subscribe and like, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.